My name is Jordan Lancaster. I'm a physiology doctoral student at the University of Arizona. I've been working on developing a cell-based tissue-engineered therapeutic for the treatment of heart failure. Uh, heart failure is the number one reason for morbidity and mortality uh, worldwide, and in the United States alone, there are over 600,000 new cases that present annually. Uh, the incidence and prevalence of heart failure is growing uh, year to year, so there is a clear unmet need for novel and new therapeutics. The most common cause or reason for developing heart failure is a, a heart attack or an ischemic cardiomyopathy. The area in which the heart attack occurred becomes thin, scarred, you lose the muscle, and so there's a need to try to replace or restore that muscle that was injured. What we're really trying to do is take those therapeutic cells, put them in an environment in which they're more likely to succeed, such as a cardiac patch. Uh, the cardiac patch really uh, provides two things, one of which is structural support, so that these terminally differentiated cardiomyocytes will lay down and adhere. Uh, and second, once you implant it, it'll provide uh, a vascular response or new blood flow um, to this transplanted uh, patch, uh, enabling those cells to survive and ultimately contribute to the improvements in, in cardiac function. One of the components that we utilize that really aid in the robustness is a synthetic membrane. And this synthetic membrane breaks down and disappears, dissolves within about 20 to 30 days. So once we implant our scaffold, the synthetic component dissolves away and you're left with just the therapeutic cells. One of the important aspects of this patch to key into is really the robust nature of the construct. So one of the things that we're envisioning is an off-the-shelf uh, cardiac patch. And what this is is a, a patch that's been pre-constructed uh, and it's cryopreserved. And when an individual is in need of a, of a therapeutic, the surgeon can thaw it out and use those minimally invasive uh, surgical techniques and implant it on the heart. If you can employ a robotic technique where you're only working on a couple of small working ports, the trauma to that patient is a lot less. We've recently started working with IPS-derived cardiomyocytes, and what they allow us to do is work with a cell that's well characterized, it's well understood, it's validated by the community, and it can be generated in, in, in large numbers so that we're not limited by cell supply. Um, these cells are, are easy to work with, they come cryopreserved, so I can put my energy into generating a cardiac construct and looking at the true functional benefit opposed to going back and doing a, a lot of the characterization work that a, a lot of other uh, investigators have to do. When we made the transition into employing uh, IPS-derived cardiomyocytes, it allowed us to get uh, very specific about the experimental design. I could plan out my set of experiments for that day, the week, the month. I could go to the, the, the freezer, I could break out the cells, thaw them, and use them as I wanted to. And that's really important because it allows me to focus on uh, generating a cardiac construct and really studying it itself and not having to worry about the reagents that, that go into it. Without IPS-derived cardiomyocytes, we'd be hard-pressed to find a human cell line. CDI is very good at helping me uh, when I have an issue or if I have a question about how to use their, their products. Um, I'm always able to get in touch with the appropriate person uh, and troubleshoot and make a decision and move forward in a timely manner. The future work that is going to be put into this project is really moving it forward uh, to preclinical models, really testing the, the feasibility and efficacy of utilizing a tissue engineered cardiac patch um, and really making that push to commercialization, really trying to get something into the clinic that can be utilized for uh, the treatment of heart failure.